Nintendo, sorry, you can't give them money. And Blizzard loots are about to get a lot shinier. This is Screenplay Daily News. It's Friday the 23rd of June, I am Nick. And I'm Steph, and here's what we deemed newsworthy. Nintendo have issued a formal apology for the shortage of Switch consoles available worldwide. After a strong launch, the Nintendo Switch has been increasingly difficult to buy across the globe as the company failed to keep up with demand. Steph, I feel like this is every Nintendo console all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's hard because I understand they don't want to overproduce and then mm. the console bombs and then, you know, they have all this product. And what are you going to do with all these Switches hanging around all of a sudden? <laughs> but you got a Switch. I just, I, you know, I think I'm actually part of the problem. Right. Do you want me to tell you why? Why? Just say yes. Yes. The reason I'm part of the problem is because uh, it must be very difficult to tell how many people are going to buy a Switch or anything that you put out, like gauging from audience reaction. And when the Switch was announced, I went, oh yeah, it's really cool, but Zelda is the only game that's coming out for it, and I don't know if that's enough for me to buy it day one. So I was not going to buy a Switch on day one, all the way up until the day the Switch came out, and then I went, I'm weak, I need to go buy a Switch. <laughs> so I walked half an hour in the rain with my dog to buy one. So, well, what about pre-orders and stuff, though? Well, you could, I guess you could factor that sort of stuff in, but you're right that you go- Have you ever pre-ordered a console? Oh god, no. No, no, no. Because you expect that it's going to be there for you to purchase the day of and you know, the months after. Absolutely. Not That's the cool. case with Nintendo. It's not the case. I mean, they had exactly the same problem with the NES Classic, uh, which was hilariously short. Yeah, but I think that was kind of meant to be more of an exclusive, like, get it while you can because we're doing a limited run type thing. Do you reckon, though, that they also just underestimated how crazy successful that thing was? Maybe, but then can't you just, like, do another run of them? I think that they were just trying to be like, you know, this is a, a Nintendo classic. Yeah, right. But then I guess that just is really helping scalpers on eBay. <laughs> it is, yeah. And But that that whole do another run of them is actually part of the problem for the Switch at the moment in that they're competing with Apple uh, and the iPhone 8. So apparently a bunch of the parts of the iPhone 8 are oh, things that you right. would be using in the Switch. And so uh, the big companies in China, uh, they've got to fulfill both orders and obviously way more iPhones are getting made than Switches. And so uh, Nintendo need to wait behind Apple and they can't really afford to outbid Apple. Yeah, and they can't really compete with Apple. They'd be selling the console at a loss. Mm. But they have said that there's going to be enough hardware for when the Splatoon 2 bundle drops. So that's good. Cool. Moving on, Blizzard are making changes to the loot drop system in Overwatch. Nothing feels worse than getting a double up of a legendary skin when you open a loot box. So game director Jeff Kaplan says they're reworking the algorithm to stop you getting duplicate items so frequently. So you're still going to get them, obviously, mm -hmm. just far less often. It's such a good idea. I mean, you know, this has been a problem in sort of Blizzard games, the, the whole breadth of them uh, for a while now of, you know, you pay a bunch of money to just play the RNG game and then you're getting things that you already have. Yeah, but that's kind of, I feel like it's been part of their master plan, you know, because yeah, absolutely. And the, now part of their master plan, they're in phase two of the master plan, which is phase one, make sure that everyone just buys a bunch of loot boxes forever. Mm. And then phase two is make this change. And now people will buy more loot boxes because they'll they'll go, oh, I'm probably more likely to get that legendary skin now. Yeah, right. Dastardly. <laughs> uh, they did say that uh, they will be keeping the same amount of credits that you get in the boxes as well, or possibly even increasing them okay. so that you can, you know, even if you don't get things that you wanted, then you can start crafting, crafting those things and, yourselves. Yeah. yeah. They're also making changes to the way that this works in Hearthstone as well with the card packs uh, when you open a pack you will not get a legendary that you already own until you own all the legendaries in that set already. Is this breaking your heart a little bit because I mean, you've spent four thousand dollars on Hearthstone? I could have spent two grand <laughs> if the system was there in the first place. This is uh... I feel like they should give you some kind of little reward a little Something something for people who've put in the big bucks. I feel they should too, but that would mean they need to give something away for free. Making other news, Beyond Good and Evil 2 has been so close to vaporware for so long that even this year's cinematic reveal at E3 couldn't convince some skeptics that it would ever see the light of day. To quell all fears, game creator Michelle Unsell has unveiled a 15 minute gameplay demo, although it's not really gameplay, it's more flight play and floating monkey play, but it certainly looks pretty. With E3 out of the way, the next big event on every gamer's calendar is Gamescom. The event is held annually in Cologne, Germany, but this year, for the first time, it's being opened by Chancellor of Germany Angela Merkel. And finally, it's 2017 and the Dynasty Warriors series is still going strong. The latest footage from the ninth installment teases a much more expansive environment in which you can continue to button mash hordes of foes to death. Well, that's it for today's news, and hey, what's your afternoon look like? 
maybe come along to our Facebook live stream where you can ask Nick and Steph anything in answer, which stands for Ask Nick and Steph Anything. See? It's an acronym. Get it? I will be live from 3.30 p.m. on our Facebook page, so be there. And speaking of live streams, thank you to those who came along to our Gwent stream yesterday afternoon on Twitch. We had a blast opening all those kegs and then uh, winning some games and losing to a bunch of weird spiders. This is a disaster. Before we sign off, you may have noticed some new Pokemon art in the background. A big thanks to Phoenix who sent these in. Aren't they creative? They're very cool. Very cool. Uh, you can visit her Etsy page. The details are in the description below. You can also follow Screenplay in all of these places. And the details for those are also in the description below. I'm Nick. And I'm Steph. And we'll see you every weekday for the rest of your lives. Uh, today we're going to leave you with this sick clip of uh, a YouTuber playing the theme from Morrowind on an instrument called the Automatone. I believe this is a Bulbasaur. At some point we're gonna get Alex Kidd and he's back. And if enough of you buy, or not even buy, download and then pay $1.99 to unlock the ads on Alex Kidd, then we might get a remaster. Yeah. And then potentially a new one. Because he holds up. I contend he's still better than Mario. I just don't think that's gonna happen.